Hey, you guys. Today's video is going to be all about the underpaint technique. Sorry, there is a hair right here in my eye. I did this technique in a video recently. I got a lot of questions about it. I got some DMs about it. Plus, I just think it's a really good technique that maybe you haven't tried out and would like to. This technique will flatter almost everyone. There are some tips and tricks along the way to make it a little bit more adaptable to your particular skin type or makeup preferences. You'll have to stay tuned to find out all about that. But let's just get into the video. I hope you enjoy it. Make sure you are subscribed if you are not and check the down bar for links to all my social media platforms. And uh, let's just get into it. I'm gonna have a naked face in three, two, one. All right, you guys, so here we are. There are some people that this technique is for and there are some people who this technique might not be so much for. I'm gonna tell you really quick what you're gonna need to achieve this technique. First of which is going to be a concealer that matches my skin tone or my foundation that I'm gonna use. Right now, I'm on about day four or five of my fake tan, so my face is drastically lighter than my body. That's just what happens because I use Retin-A and it's just an exfoliant that takes my skin off my face pretty quick. But either way, you just need one that is closer to your skin tone. I would go with a drier textured concealer if you can. Some really good examples of that would be something like this one from NARS. I believe this is called the, I need to wear glasses on camera. I don't know what I'm finna do y'all, I'm getting old. This is the Soft Matte Complete Concealer. You can use a liquid if that's all that you have, but I just find that this one lays a little bit better on anything I'm trying to conceal underneath my makeup makeup because it is a drier, more matte texture as opposed to a liquid, which should dry down anyway, but for ease of use, something more matte, a little bit more stiff, not so creamy might be your best friend. Also, you will need your under eye concealer of choice. I would suggest that you err on the side of caution with the tone that you're going for. The beauty of this type of look, this type of technique is that we want it to look very real, very natural, very much us. So having stark, bright areas on on your face doesn't always give us that appearance. Just be a little bit more conservative with it. The other thing you're gonna need is some sort of cream contour or cream bronzer product. I use the Fenty Match Sticks, but obviously there's tons of things out there that you can use. You could also use just a concealer. Go to the drugstore, get you a Maybelline concealer that's uh, four or five shades darker than your current skin tone, and that will definitely work as well. You're also gonna need a foundation. Because the look that we're doing today is meant to be a little bit more approachable, something that's very very, very beautiful in person. You don't wanna go in with something too full coverage because it's essentially just gonna cover up the contouring that you do ahead of time. Also, what I like about this technique is I want it to look more fresh and real. So full coverage concealers underneath a full coverage foundation is completely the opposite of what I'm going for. In my case, I use either the MAC Face and Body or the Charlotte Tilbury Light Wonder Foundation or a mix of the two. It just depends on what color I am. Other than that, you just need to prep your skin however you see fit. I have on a little bit of moisturizer, but I'm also gonna pop on some MAC strobe cream. So the people that I think would benefit from this technique the most versus the people that I think probably will not, if you like a sheer, kind of glowy, more lifelike appearance to the skin, it's going to look really good on you. Also, if you are dry, it's probably gonna look really good on you. It looks really good in person and on camera camera, I will say, I find that whatever I do with this the opposite way, which is foundation first and then concealer contour, all that good stuff second, it just doesn't look as good in person as it does on photos, which in this case, I feel like it looks pretty good in both. The other people I think that might not like it so much is if you're extremely oily, but there are things you can do to combat it. Even though we're using a lot of cream and things like that, you absolutely can apply as much powder as you want to at the end of this application. It's really just gonna be dealer's choice, but for me, what I like about it is how real it makes my skin look and the minute I start mattifying it too much, it sort of takes that away. The exception would be I have to powder underneath my eyes and the center of my face because that's where I get the most oil. That's kind of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the spot concealing part of this. I'm gonna use that NARS Soft Matte Cream Concealer I was telling you about. I'm just gonna use this brush. It's a Smith 235. This isn't supposed to be perfect right out the gate because there are more layers coming in later on. When you're applying your spot concealer, one tip I will give you is to dab it on with the brush and then blend the edges out 
with your finger. Because sometimes with spot concealing, that can be the difficult part is getting the surrounding area not to look completely, I don't know, different in tone and texture compared to the spot that you're covering up. So like I said, I just put a little bit on top and then press it in with my finger. The warmth of your fingers will kind of help the product become a little bit more emollient, warm up into the skin and blend out much more easily. So I've already applied my concealer and now I'm gonna move on to the next step, which is very optional. It just kind of depends on what your plan is, but sometimes I do this and sometimes I don't. Today I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna take the Becca, this is called the Under Eye Brightening Corrector, which I've recently purchased earlier this year. I get a lot of use out of it. I think it's a lot better than a full-blown orange color corrector because you just need a very small amount of it and it really, like look at the difference. It really brightens up the under eye area if you feel like you're looking a little dark under there and don't wanna apply tons and tons of concealer later. I'm really just using the tiniest bit depositing the excess on the back of my hand. That's another tip in general I will give you guys when it comes to working with cream products. I know a lot of people prefer not to do cream contour. They feel like it's a lot of work and I do understand that, but I'll tell you the main thing that makes it a lot of work is applying too much product. If you apply too much concealer, too much contour, it's going to expand as you blend it out and therefore it is a lot harder to control. Now I'm gonna move on to contour and as I said before, I'm using the Fenty matchstick. The trick with these is to warm them up a lot on the back of your hand before you get that party started. Using them, they just are a little bit stiffer, drier formula. This is where you're gonna have to use your discretion. I've gone through and tried to use just this one, which is Mocha, much warmer, and I've gone and used Amber, much cooler. If I use uh, Mocha by itself, I end up looking pretty orange. If I use Amber by itself, I don't know, I feel like it, it's not doing what I want it to do. So I like to mix these together to get the perfect undertone for me. I'm a very neutral person, so I tend to always mix warm and cool tones together to get the effect I'm looking for. But I've just got this warmed up and juicy, that's disgusting, on the back of my hand. And now I'm just gonna take a brush. This is the Morphe and Jaclyn Hill JH07. I'm gonna deposit it on my hand and I'm going to start applying this in the areas that I would normally contour. A lot of you guys, when I talked about this technique in my last video, were like, duh, Whitney, everybody knows about underpainting. This isn't groundbreaking stuff. Like, there's not a whole lot of new stuff going on in makeup in general, let's, let's be real. But I think most of you guys saw Scott Barnes do this, which let me tell y'all, I freaking love Scott Barnes. I was a full blown, like, Scott Barnes book owner. I was a member of his online portal. Like, I just think he's a genius. But what he does, and I watched the video with him and Toddy, so I can say this definitively, he says it too. He is painting for the stage in that scenario. What we're doing is painting for the street. This is for us to go to dinner. This is for us to go um, have a nice date with our husbands or boyfriends or girlfriends or whatever. It's the same general concept, but we're not using these extremely bold colors and depths of colors that he's using because I'm not Jennifer Lopez on stage. This is just a little bit more subtle of a way to do it. So I I do contour my nose this way now as well. I will tell you if nothing else you guys, doing your nose contour under paint style, so much easier than doing it with a powder on top of your existing makeup. Number one, I know it looks a little crazy, relax. But number one, you don't run into that situation where through the act of blending out your nose contour, you find that you are just disrupting the makeup that's already on your nose. That was something I used to do all the time. It's a lot easier to control. It looks a lot more natural. Like it's just, it's easier. Once again, you can truly go as harsh or as bold or as subtle as you prefer with this technique. I, in my opinion, I mean, this is subtle for me. I know like during the stages of watching it happen, it doesn't look subtle at all, but compared to what I was doing before, I just see, a lot less harsh lines, everything looks really blended together. It just looks like I have dope bone structure and beautiful skin as opposed to my makeup looks really good. So now that we have our contour on, we're going to start to do our under eye concealing or highlighting or brightening or whatever you wanna call it, just depends on what your preference is. I'm going
going to use a mix of custard and a mix of ginger from NARS, their Radiant Creamy Concealer. One's a little too dark, one's a little too light. I'm kind of, like I said, I'm at the end of the life of this particular sunless tan. So I do a lot of mixing when I'm at this stage in my sunless tan journey, but you're just gonna apply your concealer once again. Don't apply too much. You can always add more. It is so much harder to take makeup away than it is just to add a little bit more if you're feeling it. And since we're using a lot of cream products and you don't wanna have to use too much powder, that is something to keep in mind. When you use a lot of cream, really heavy, goopy, thick cream on top of itself over and over and over again, you run into a scenario where your skin's either not accepting it, it's not drying down very well, so you might find yourself applying a lot of powder, which there's nothing wrong with, this is all a matter Matter of personal preference but in my opinion what makes this technique what it is is the fact that it makes your skin just look really real and radiant and most powder I mean there's definitely better performing powders out there than others but most powder really takes away the skin like appearance of your skin pretty quickly another tip and something to keep in mind, which I've been talking about for the duration of my channel, is that any areas of your face that are textured, you're going to want to be mindful of how much glowy, highlighted, shimmery stuff you're putting. That's where you really want to focus on applying your powder. If in my case, like I have larger pores here, a little bit on my forehead, everything else is pretty smooth. It's just here and here. I definitely apply powder in those areas, not only because because like I said, I'm a little bit on the oily side, but also because having my pores kind of mattified or minimized with powder just makes the overall appearance of my makeup look a little bit more polished. It's just that finishing touch that just brings it all together. And honestly, right now, it doesn't even seem like I need foundation in the sense that my skin looks pretty covered. Now you can still see a little bit of some of these spots I've got going on underneath my makeup, but I don't don't really care I just I don't know I'm not as obsessed with like this mask like completely flawless opaque look anymore I think it's it's hopefully on the way out I just want to look real and just how I do it so the next step is to move on to foundation I'm going to mix these two together on a palette so this might be one of the more important aspects of this technique or what tends to work for me is you're gonna want to use a foundation brush you can use a sponge I just like a brush for this reason number one once again we're trying not to apply too much product so using a brush and then being able to go in later and absorb excess with your sponge best way to achieve that not to mention sponges because it'll require you to apply pressure you might move the work you've already done a little bit if you have a good foundation brush one that's really soft it's got some density to it but it also has a good bit of movement you can just kind of stipple this in a pressing motion onto the skin over top of what you've created it shouldn't cause a massive disruption now if you like a super harsh contour like i can see each individual line on my face kind of thing you like my little interpretive dance I just did you probably won't like this technique because even though you can see all these lines pretty apparent on my face right now you're not gonna see them like that in a second you can add more later which I'm going to for the sake of camera but if I wasn't gonna be on camera today I don't think I would add any more contour at all but just so to make sure you guys can see where you can take this I will be applying it anyway so I'm taking my brush and a very very small amount of my foundation I really don't even know why I keep pouring out so much when I do this because I don't even use a portion of it but I've just got it on my brush I'm gonna take a little bit on the back of my hand always try to touch the back of your hand with your tools or your cream products when you're applying them it makes a huge difference in your ability to control what you're doing but this is the motion I'm going for. Do you see how it is easily and quickly covering up my hand without causing a lot of disruption? So that's what you're gonna do. You're just gonna start pressing this onto the skin. You're gonna be very gingerly with it. You're just applying a foundation to help even out the overall tone of the skin. 
that's all I'm going to do. As I said before, I used almost no foundation. There is a ton left on here. Then you're going to take your sponge and just lightly, you're pressing this into the skin. You're absorbing any excess product, but you're not trying to disturb anything you have going on underneath. This is where you're going to apply powder if that's what you want to do. So for me, I'm going to use the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. I'm going to load up my brush and tap off the excess. That's how much is left now that I've tapped it off and I'm going to press it underneath my eye area or anywhere that I have a pore issue, like I said right here. So you can see immediately this just looks a little bit more textured than over here. This is much more smooth and that's why I'm doing it. Also, like I said, to deal with oil control, control, I'm really Southern today. It just helps a little bit. Same thing with the center of my forehead right here. Just to try to take some of that shine down and the center of my face in general, because that's where I am very oily. So the main difference between the way that I used to do my makeup and the way I do it when I'm doing this routine is that I do not immediately go in and powder the remainder of my face. I do powder underneath my eyes, pretty quickly because I don't want my concealer to crease. If you let it crease and then powder it, you're just gonna set a crease in place all day. So I do that part pretty quickly, but the rest of my face, I'm not gonna powder um, for a few minutes because I need to work on my lower lash line and then I'll powder the rest of my face if I even feel like I need it. Cause lately, sometimes I feel like I don't. So I'm gonna turn the camera off, do my lower lash line and I'll be back to finish this up with you guys. Okay, so I have my eyes done and my skin still feels pretty tacky. Now what that means is if I immediately move on now to doing things like bronzer or blush, then the areas that my skin is still tacky, that powdery product is just gonna cling onto it and it's gonna, it's not gonna blend out. Powders blend into powders, creams blend into cream. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Hourglass Veil Powder. I'm gonna take a little bit of this powder, once again, just what's in the cap. I'm loading up the brush and I'm, I know it's really loud, but I'm tapping off the excess and I'm just pressing ever so slightly into the areas that need it. This powder is very, not glowy, there's no glitter in it, but it's not flat matte. It's perfect for this. So once again, just lightly tapping a little bit of powder into the skin. It's still retaining the glowy appearance that I want, but it's not tacky anymore. It's just got that, that nice little balance I'm looking for that allows any powder product to blend in easily. If you're dry and you don't have to apply any powder, mazel tov, I wish that was my situation, you would probably wanna go ahead and use things like cream bronzers, clean, cream blushes, cream products are just your best friend when it comes to making things look more youthful and lifelike, but as I said, I'm not so lucky, I have to use powder. So I'm gonna move on to bronzer. For bronzer, I'm gonna mix the Hourglass Luminous Bronze Light with the Fenty Beauty Island Ting. And I like to mix a matte bronzer with a luminous bronzer. I've talked about this many times because I feel like it lends itself nicely to the overall look that I'm going for. Plus the little bit of shimmer and the more luminous bronzer is going to help the bronzer blend out really well. And I just realized I didn't actually contour again, which you don't have to do, but like I said, for the sake of the camera, I'm going to. For contour, I'm using the same thing I always use. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Filmstar Bronze and Glow Contour Kit. This is my third one of these. Is that true? It's literally the only contour I ever use. Keep it back here to the best of your ability. Don't bring it in too far. Bringing a contour in all this way is really obvious, but if you you keep it kind of back here, work in very small sections and buff it in really lightly. It's a lot less in your face, Nancy Grace. So now moving on to bronzer. Like I said, I told you what I'm using and what brush I'm using for this. Once again, focus on patting into the skin. I know that seems very counterintuitive because we think of blending as like this kind of circular, um, lots of contact with the skin motion. But once again, we're not trying to disrupt what we have done. So to blend something out when you're using a dotting or a patting motion, you just want to press firmly and quickly. But there is another trick that's coming up in a few minutes on how you can even further blend all these lines together. So I'm just gonna finish bronzing up the remainder of my face. 
One thing you do want to do with bronzer is you do not want to neglect completely the center of your face. You want everything to be very fluid and in line with each other. Plus bronzer is supposed to mimic where the sun naturally hits your face and your the sun absolutely hits your nose. That's how we end up with a little summer freckles. So you want to take a little bit of that bronzer, make sure it's not overloaded on that brush. And you just want to start kind of lightly dragging it in this area, not too much. You don't want it too dark, but you just want to bring a little bit of cohesive energy to the complexion. I don't know if I've ever used that turn of phrase before, but I'm gonna roll with it. So for blush, today I'm gonna use NARS Madly. Use whatever brush you, blush you prefer. Almost every time I go to say blush, it comes out brush. So I'm gonna take this brush. This is the JH06, but basically you're just one, some sort of brush that is long. Once again, it's got lots of movement to it. It does have enough density to deposit, but it's not going to disturb your makeup. Like something like this is much more stiff. It's not gonna have the same kind of soft feathering ability that something a little bit fluffier and longer will have. And as usual, you guys know how to apply blush, but what you do wanna do is you really wanna sweep this a little bit of everywhere. Once again, we're blending colors together. We want seamlessness as my spirit animal, John McClain would say. Just like with the bronzer, we're gonna bring it on the nose a little bit. We're not looking for big opaque slashes of color. We're looking for washes. Think watercolor over oil painting. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the camera off, make myself more presentable, and I'll be back. So this is essentially the finished product. I hope that it's reading on camera the way that it reads in real life. In real life, it just looks like my skin perfected. It doesn't look heavy, it doesn't look cakey. You can't really see any harsh lines, but yet there's definition. I am completely in love with this technique and I do not see a scenario anytime soon where I would go back to the old ways. Now, one more finishing touch you can do if you feel like you're still seeing a bit of separation or things aren't quite as diffuse as you would like is you can do the buffing technique. Sometimes I'll use the Hourglass Veil Translucent Powder. Sometimes I will use an actual finishing powder from them. Basically what this is going to do is it's going to add another layer of that very, very glowy skin, but it's just going to soften any edges that are left. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video or found it helpful. I certainly enjoyed making it for you. Make sure you check the down bar for links to all my social media platforms. Some of you guys have told me that you like sing that along with me every time and it's just the sweetest thing ever. <laughs> so cute. But anyway, I hope you're having an amazing day. I don't know if I said that. Subscribe if you have not. Don't know if I've said that either, but I will catch you in the next one. Bye.